ಶ್ರೀಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಶನ್ನೋ ಮಿತ್ರ ಶಂವರುಣ ಶನ್ನೋ ಭವತ್ವರ್ಯಮ ಶನ್ನ ಇಂದ್ರೋ ಬೃಹಸ್ಪತಿ ಶನ್ನೋ ವಿಷ್ಣೋರುರುಕ್ರಮ ನಮೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ವಾಯೋ ತ್ವಮೇವ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಕ್ಷ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಸಿ ತ್ವಾಮೇವ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಕ್ಷ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವದಿಷ್ಯಾಮಿ ವೃತ ವದಿಷ್ಯಾಮಿ ಸತ್ಯಂ ವದಿಷ್ಯಾಮಿ ತನ್ಮಾಮವತು ತದ್ವಕ್ತಾರಮವತು ಅವತು ಮಾಂ ಅವತು ವಕ್ತಾರ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 so hardik swagatam uh, to everybody to all our esteemed panelists and distinguished guests present on this final day of the sanskrit utsav 2021 that was held from 22nd of august to till date uh, i would now like to request professor anvay mukhopadhyay to please give the report of the sanskrit utsav that happened so far ಸಹಸ್ರಬೂಧೇಜಿ ಚೇರ್ಮನ್ ಎ ಐ ಸಿ ಟಿ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಶ್ರೀನಿವಾಸ ವರಖೇದಿಜಿ ವೈಸ್ ಚಾನ್ಸಲರ್ ಕವಿ ಕುಲಗೂಡು ಕಾಳಿದಾಸ್ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ವಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಆಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ವೆರಿ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀಶ್ ದೇವ್ ಪೂಜಾರಿಜಿ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ದ ಅಖಿಲ್ ಭಾರತೀಯ ಮಹಾಮಂತ್ರಿ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ ಭಾರತಿ ದೆನ್ ಆನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಥರ್ಡ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಆಸ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಪವನ್ ಗೋಯಲ್ಜಿ ಹೂ ಸ್ಪೋಕ್ ಆನ್ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಂಪ್ಯೂಟೇಷನಲ್ ಲಿಂಗ್ವಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಜಯರಾಮ ಮಹಾದೇವನ್ಜಿ uh spoke on sanskrit and yoga professor pavan goel is uh, uh, a professor at the department of computer science iit kharagpur and dr jayana mahadevan ji is uh, a researcher on a yoga shastra so mahadevan ji spoke on sanskrit and the yoga traditions then on 25th we had dr p rama manohar ji from amrita vishwa vidya peetha and he spoke on sanskrit and integral health then on 26th we had with us dr vladimir yetsenka ji uh, from shri aurobindo integral life center usa and he spoke on sanskrit linguistics and literature then on 27th we had with us professor md srinivas ji from the center for policy studies and he spoke on sanskrit and natural sciences then on 28th august that is yesterday we had with us professor gauri mahulikar ji who spoke on sanskrit and sacred ecology and she is the professor and dean of faculty chinmaya vishwa vidyapeetham uh the interesting thing is that throughout all these days we had a lot of people listening to their speakers with rapt attention and we had 900 registrations from 19 various countries and from the 27 uh, states of india uh, all these speakers uh, sorry all these uh, listeners showed a uh, deep interest not just you know in intellectual terms but also yes. in spiritual terms and they were interested in knowing more about the wonderful sanskrit uh, traditions and uh, what was another interesting point that we noticed uh, during this proceedings was that a lot of young students from different uh, technology institutes in india had joined the programs and uh, they actively participated in the q and a sessions so that all the q and a sessions were very lively and most often uh, we would have to hold back our speakers for some time sometimes even for more than 15 minutes so that they could answer all the queries and curiosities of uh, the different uh, you know individuals from the audience so finally we have reached uh, Uh, today that is the last uh, you know the last session of uh, this sanskrit utsavam and uh, we are all going to look forward to a wonderful session today with all these stalwarts among us 
Uh, now I request uh, Kuldeep Ji to uh, introduce Professor Desai Ji uh, and to request him to, uh, I mean, for the further proceedings. Kuldeep Ji, over to you. Thank you, Anwar sir. Uh, on behalf of Sanskriti Club, IIT Kharagpur, I will first of all like to welcome everyone who have joined today on the final day of Sanskrit Otsar 2021 in this uh, panel discussion. Uh, I am truly honored to introduce two very important person who have been instrumental in this entire event in facilitating, in giving directions and in all the possible ways in making this uh, event a grand success. Professor Dr. Joyce Sain. Professor Sain is a uh, professor at the Architecture and Planning in, uh, Department of IIT Kharagpur and he is currently heading the uh, newly established Center of Excellence for the Indian Knowledge System at IIT Kharagpur as a chairperson and Professor Dr. Venkapaya Desai. Professor Desai is uh, associated with the Civil Engineering Department here at IIT Kharagpur and he is currently the Dean of the Faculties of Engineering and Architecture. So, we the students of uh, IIT Kharagpur are really blessed with this event. We all got really motivated with all these talks that have happened uh, over the week. And uh, I would, uh, with this few words, I would like to invite Professor Desai to give his opening remarks and uh, set the floor for today's panel discussion. Over to you, Professor Desai. Yeah, Dhanyavad Kuldeep Ji. Sarvebhya Suswagatam, Swagatam, Namaskara. So, Atya, so I will, uh, uh, I take this opportunity uh, to welcome everyone right from the, uh, uh, the, uh, the most uh, venerable, uh, that is revered, actually most uh, respected uh, Professor Satyavrata Shastriji, the only Jnana Peet awardee in uh, Sanskrit so far and uh, other uh, uh, distinguished uh, panelists, uh, Shri Chamu Krishna Shastriji, uh, Professor uh, uh, Ram Subramaniam Ji, uh, Professor uh, Anil Kumar Gauri Shetty, uh, Professor uh, Subhash Kak, uh, he has joined all the way from uh, USA and uh, um, uh, Professor Vladimir Ji and uh, my other colleagues as well as Professor Somesh Kumar, Professor uh, Kishore and uh, all my uh, other uh, Sanskrit friends and uh, uh, as one well-wishers, Professor Hari Mohan Pillai and all. So uh, we also have uh, with us the Ambassador of Dominican Republic. So I request uh, uh, Honorable uh, His, His Excellency David Puig Ji, and I request our director, uh, Professor uh, Virendra Kumar Tiwari, to uh, formally welcome uh, uh, Ambassador His Excellency uh, David Puig Ji from the Dominican Republic. Well, uh, thank you, Professor Desai. I think uh, I'm very honored because uh, I have some some uh, some sort of a requirement in Dominican uh, Republic and that's why the moment I heard that uh, ambassador of this uh, country is uh, uh, is interested uh, I was very happy and immediately I agreed to uh, Madam uh, Chaudhary that I will definitely like to be there and listen to him so we welcome you uh, Sri David Pugji uh, the ambassador to Dominican Republic uh, to this particular uh, Sanskrit Saptas uh, plenary session where uh, we are all ready to listen to various uh, illustrious um, speakers and panelists and uh, uh, among whom you are also there and we would love to know uh, your ways of uh, thinking about Sanskrit and your vision of uh, utilizing such uh, language in, in your uh, as an ambassador in this uh, Dominican Republic. So I welcome you along with all other uh, distinguished uh, uh, panelists who are here, who are known, some of them are known to me, some of them are very respected ones whom I had seen uh, when we had the Bharat um, Tirtha 
uh, last year. So I'm very excited to be in, uh, part of this uh, center, which our friends, Professor uh, Joy Sain, uh, Professor uh, Sumis Kumar, Professor uh, uh, this Arjuna Anuradha Chaudhary, then um, or Mr. Mukherjee, uh, Dr. Mukherjee, and all, uh, including our students and faculty colleagues, are associated. And I am so happy to let you know that uh, within very short period of time, several research scholars have seen uh, have uh, consented to be uh, working in this area, and uh, many students have joined some of the courses. I mean, this is very. Um, uh, I would say that it is the attraction which Professor Joy Sain has created because of his uh, uh, knowledge and the way he speaks and uh, um, becomes uh, so vocal about IKS. And we are blessed with uh, the center by the government of India uh, started last year. And we are working, uh, and in fact, the location of this particular center in front of that uh, uh, is a place where the uh, war planes were, uh, were uh, repaired and maintained. So there is a very big uh, hangar. We used to the hangars are known as the places where the uh, these uh, the aircrafts are prepared. So that building is there. We have the um, place where the people were kept before they were hanged. So that uh, isolation room is also there. I think uh, after seeing what uh, has happened to the Jallianwala Bagh uh, yesterday, when I saw that our honourable Prime Minister has uh, inaugurated the new look of this as well as the light and sound. I was uh, delighted to speak to Professor Sain and to all my colleagues as to can we do something of this area where we have the jail. Can we recreate the story of what uh, when our uh, Netaji Subhash Bose came to receive the bodies of uh, two of the persons. In fact, a lot of paper cuttings, etc. are available. Can we make it something like this and so that all our students will know and the future students will also know that really this IIT Kharagpur came out of uh, the martyrs' uh, stardom, and uh, we are all debated and uh, I mean, indebted to all these people in this uh, country who left us for our freedom struggle. So, um, with this, I think I welcome uh, you, Dr. Uh, David Pugh, uh, as well as other uh, professors and panelists uh, in this uh, uh, particular webinar. Thank you very much, and uh, best of luck. I'm here to listen and learn from you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Director Sir, for your constant encouragement. I mean, from the time of the inauguration and ever since uh, you've come, you've been a great support for the entire IKS movement and anything to do with Sanskrit. So we're extremely indebted. Anugrihitas Mahabhavatam Tatra Sahayena Samarthanena Chasarva Karyartham. So, Bahu Dhanyavadaha. I would like to now introduce our chair of uh, the session chair. Professor T. Ramasubramanyam ji, and uh, he is a professor, the chair professor of the Cell for Indian Science and Technology in Sanskrit in IIT Bombay. Uh, he's also a fellow of the Indian National Science Academy, a council member of the International Union of History and Philosophy of Science and Technology, and member of the Second Sanskrit Commission and the Sanskrit, uh, the Central Sanskrit Board. He was conferred the Maharshi Badarayana Vyasamman by the President of India in 2008 and honored with the title of Vidwat Pravara by the Shankaracharya of the Sri Shingeri Sharada Peetam in 2003. He's the author of several important books, translation and mathematical notes of the Tantra Sangraha, the Ganita Yukti Bhasha, etc. And he has uh, numerous research articles on this topic. He is basically a PhD in theoretical physics with an MA in Sanskrit and a bachelor's in engineering. So this is very technical information, but I think anybody who knows uh, Professor Rama Subramanyam, whom we fondly refer to as Anna, knows his complete dedication to the promotion of um, Shastric knowledge. As, uh, as, a, as an elder, in fact, he encourages everybody to engage in the study of Sanskrit, and he's one of the leading figures across the world in the field of uh, Sanskrit and mathematical and astronomical texts in, uh, that are available. Is doing fantastic work at IIT Bombay and uh, an inspiration. He, he combines mathematics, Vedanta, and brings many things together to uh, make the learning experience extremely enriching for his students. So, just with these few words, there's a lot to be said about each one of the luminaries who's present here. But with these very few words, uh, just a symbolic token of a, of a, a acknowledgement of your greatness and, and your contributions 
to this field. Uh, Anna, over to you, please. Okay. <clears throat> Namaste to one and all here. Anuradha has been extremely generous. If one has to learn generosity, then I think one has to take lessons from Anuradha. Thank you so much. Now, uh, now I would like to introduce in the next uh, four or five minutes the illustrious panelists whom we have today. I am only reminded of an interesting saying of uh, Kalidasa at the beginning of his text. <laughs> he says, See, there is an interesting saying. See, he says, Yeko hi dosho gunasanni pate nimajjatindo kiranesh vivankaha. This is a beautiful saying of Kalidasa. So, among the illustrious panelists, I am a dosha. Gunasanni pata is basically all the panelist member here. So, this person here who has been put as a chair is a kalanka as in the moon. Okay. Eko hi doshaha gunasanni pate. Nimajjati Indoho Kiranesh Vivankaha. So this is the thing that I am reminded of. So coming to other interesting thing that I wanted to share with uh, the audience here is, I am also reminded of a very, very short verse, which actually brilliantly brings out the panel and the kind of theme that we have here. Among the various kavyas that we have in Sanskrit, Ratnavali by Sri Har uh, Harsha is one of the most important pieces. Right at the beginning of Ratnavali, since we have the Doyen, see Satyavata Shastriji here and other brilliant lovers of Sanskrit, brilliant in other fields, but also lovers of Sanskrit. So I just want to have this verse right at the beginning. So it says basically, Sri Harusho Nipunah Kavihi Parishadap Yesha Gunagrahini Loke Haricha Vatsara Jacharitam Atye Chadakshavayam Shri Harusho. There are four things which he is listing. Shri Harusho Nipunah Kavihi. Similarly, the institute which is actually hosting. So, with the dynamic director and far more dynamic Anuradha and Joyson. <laughs> so, this is the platform that we have created. Shri Harusho Nipunah Kavihi. And we have an assembly of scholars who have taken interest in participating in this function. And of course, as I heard, so 900 have registered, maybe even if 25% have attended, so 200 plus attendees, I mean, that is something which is remarkable. Okay. So, Parishadapvesha Gunagrahini, now I find 100 plus here. Then, Loke Haricha Vatsara Jacharitam. He says he is actually trying to depict. Vatsaraja is basically Udayana. The story of Udayana is depicted in that. What is being discussed here is the future of Sanskrit, which is actually one of the most important topics now, which is dear to us. Okay. So there is a comparison between that. Vatsaraja Charitam Natye Chadakshavayam. There he says, we are all highly skilled in actually enacting the drama. This is the opening verse of the Sutra Dhara. So, Natyaja Dakshavayam, so here all of us who have assembled here are really doyans, okay? At least the panelists, even the speakers, when I see the list, it is a brilliant list. Natyaja Dakshavayam. Then Sutradhara says, Vastvekaikam api ha vanchita phala prapte he. Each one of them is sufficient to generate interest, okay? So now, Kimpunaha, what to speak of all of them have assembled together. Madhva Hagyo Pachaya Adayam Samuditaha Saro Gunanam Ganaha. So it is a great fortune of me that I have been put as a chair in this assembly. <laughs> so with this word, so I would like to commence this. I just take a few seconds to introduce all the speakers who are really, really wonderful speakers in the panel. Professor so, Satyavarta Shastri he is like Bhishma Pitamaha in our Sanskrit area. So there is uh, no one who is really comparable to him. See, there may be scholars, he, they may not be grammarians. There may be grammarians who may not be good speakers. There may be all, but they may not be poets. So all of them wound together in one embodiment of Satyavarta Shastri is a remarkable thing. 
over and above that i must tell you that his humility is something which is amazing i have had the opportunity to be one of the members when he was actually the chairman of the commission and uh, pranams to you shastri ji so far your humility more than anything else so then so we have professor subhash kak so subhash kak is so well known so if you listen to him speaking on yoga you will think him to be a yoga master if you uh, listen to him on computer science you will think him to be a computer scientist so if you think of so history i mean you will call him a historian so he is uh, really an embodiment of various knowledge systems so there is a very very inspiring figure so and uh, one more thing which i found in uh, subhash is see this is something which is very very uh, peculiar so he will instantaneously reply to hundreds of people in the mail so i have never seen any delay from his part so i don't know how he manages his time to do research to do his own study and to reply to various people encourage various people like us okay subhash is a really amazing person so thank you for uh, joining us then we have of course chamu krishna shastri if today sanskrit is something which is existing in various parts of the globe where people have been excited to speak i would say it is all because of chamu krishna shastri for the past 40 50 years the amount of work that he has done is really really remarkable and recently i had an occasion to see the kind of work that he has done through sanskrit promotion foundation translating so many things into sanskrit so this is a real uh, blessing for us that he is also there with us so then uh, we have anil kumar gauri shetty so he is an odd man out in iit so he is basically a physicist but uh, more than physics i think he is interested in promoting sanskrit so i had occasions to visit iit kanpur he immediately dragged me not only drag me made uh, the iit director so wake up at 9 o'clock in the night okay <laughs> to meet us so we had a meeting from 9 to 10 10:30 something like that so his uh, interest uh, is really really amazing in promoting sanskrit so though he is a physicist i think uh, so janmantara samskara which has made him <laughs> to devote to sanskrit i don't know what he does in physics anyway so but he does remarkable work in sanskrit and of course we have this ambassador this ambassador is perhaps the youngest person among the screen so he is a remarkable person so he is just 40 years old but at the age of 24 he has been able to take up various positions and it is a blessing that uh, we have a person who has spent about 4 years in india and i can see so the kind of uh, see the radiance in his face so he is so delighted so we are all willing to listen to all of you with these few words i ask uh, first shastri ji to make his remarks please shastri ji over to you i start my speech with invocation there are two reasons for it one to keep up the tradition whenever we start any auspicious event we start it with invoking the grace of the deity the second this is the first reason the second reason i will explain after i am through the invocation namah shivaya astu shivaya vo yah shante shashankanala surya netra ushnatva shitat ಶೀರ್ಷೇಭರ್ತ್ಯದ್ಭುತಜನ್ನುಜಾತಿಭೂಜಯತ್ನ್ಮನಯಕಧಾಮಕವೂರ್ಮಿಮಾಲೀಕ
the one is from palace swan card and the other one is from prasad panav room the first one is inscribed on a wall in a palace as the title would explain prasad may be will be uh, swan park card palace and the second one is inscribed on a garuda pillar outside a temple on a hill it is called prasad in anubhram this shows the presence of sanskrit in thailand in as early a period as the 8th of the 9th century it was the 7th of october 1977 when i had landed at bangkok it was 2 am the flight was a little late when i was uh, through the immigration a gentleman approached me and introducing himself he said that uh, he was uh, from the embassy of india he handed me over an envelope which contained a slip that had the name and the address of the hotel where arrangement had been made for my stay and some thai currency for meeting the tax expenses he left me at the airport there was curfew in force at that time one could not leave the airport before 5 in the morning so i waited for 3 hours over there when it was about 5 o'clock i went to the taxi stand and showed the slip which had the name and the address of the hotel to, to the taxi driver he had a look at it and said sakon and nodded his head i thought that sakon was the typical thai word when i reached the hotel so i saw the name of the hotel in bold roman characters it was s a k o l sakol or sakala it means whole or complete that was my first introduction to the presence of sanskrit in thai and through that in other countries of southeast asia which was to become a subject of my life long study i had been given to understand that uh, the students should understand english they have studied it at some stage and uh, so i could very well uh, teach through the medium of english at that time i didn't know thai you know i picked it up uh, later now i can read write and uh, speak in thai fluently so what i was given to understand was that i have to prepare the courses of reading myself so i had to work in preparing the selections selection from sanskrit plays selection from sanskrit uh, prose selection from sanskrit poetry now in, the, in that selection i had the uh, a portion from the abhijnana shakuntala of kalidasa by way of introducing the work you know i had to say something about the story so i started uh, by st- telling the students that it deals with the story of love between dushant and shakuntala the students want to understand the, even the meaning of the word hello no. 
love. Then I I could not pick, you know, from their expression. It was blank. <laughs> then you know, so I tried various alternatives, you know, the word the affection, the affection, the attachment, the attraction, but none none could work. Then suddenly a girl cried out, you know, from the class, Oh Rag. Sanskrit Raga. That is a word for love in Thai. And so I went on you know, bit by bit picking up uh, the Sanskrit words in Thai. The inscriptions I could lay my hands on in a very different way. I have published a very big volume on the subject, the Sanskrit inscriptions of Thailand. It was uh, shortly after my arrival in, in Bangkok that I was invited by a princess, not in the direct line, but uh, connected with the royal family, you know, so the, the, the aunt you know, of the princess. To spend an evening with her, so I went to the palace. I saw, you know, something inscribed on a wall. I inquired of the princess as to what it was. She said she didn't know. It had been there then, but nobody had cared for it. You know, so, and uh, then I started uh, reading it because I was. Uh, Picking up, you know, the Thai script at that time, and I could uh, read only just as a new literate, you know, just the, the first uh, one or two words. You know, it is said them. I said, you know, this is definitely a Sanskrit script. It, it, it is not Pali, surely. And then I thought that if in a modern city like Bangkok, you know, there could be a Sanskrit inscription. On a wall, there could be many other Sanskrit inscriptions uh, in the kingdom as well. So, and I went about in search of them. I went to each and every part of it, you know, undergoing great hardships. It was not easy because there are no uh, facilities as uh, are uh, to be met with in big cities. I went to the villages, the countryside. You know, so. And uh, there were inscriptions in the various languages and various scripts. So, so I had therefore to pick up you know, only the Sanskrit inscriptions out of them and the, the large number of them. So I was able to pick them up and uh, then uh, transcribe them in Devanagari and uh, Roman, translated them and then studied them from all points of view. So social, historical, cultural, linguistic and literary. So that was one part of this study. And the other part was the Sanskrit vocabulary in Thai and in Southeast Asian languages. The Sanskrit words in Southeast Asian languages, since I'm not uh, confining myself to Thai, though of course so there will be emphasis on that because I spent a you know, number of years over there and uh, tried to understand the spirit of the country as much as I could. The Sanskrit words in Southeast Asia are found in, in four forms. Before I take up these forms one by one, I would first of all like to say something about the word Southeast Asia, which I have used now. The word for Southeast, which is in use in Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, and such other countries, is not Dakshina Purva, which is uh, in vogue in India. It is Agneya. When somebody has to say, and but it, the pronunciation is a little different in some cases. 
there's the, the local influence you know the girl is pronounced there like her the final uh, syllable is dropped so agneya becomes there akane akane girl being pronounced as her so we have akane there's a twofold tendency noticeable in the words in though drawn from sanskrit one is uh, and uh, because one has to familiarize oneself you know while speaking of uh, the presence of sanskrit in the south east asian languages astri varya ha eka nivedana ma astri varya atra nimesha treya nimesha chatushtaye idi samapyate annyebhya ha avakasha ha eva eva tatra yavat shigram kripaya kshamyatam bhavatu bhavatu ayam eva vishaya Sir, now uh, I have to say something about the presence of Sanskrit in Thai. So there are the first is the one the, the words which are uh, pronounced in the same way as in Sanskrit. We have the word "gepark" in it is in in Cambodia. This means the consequence. The, the, the same type of use of it as in kalidasa vibhaka is food the thura prasaya mameva janmantara patakanam vibhaka is food the thura prasaya so the vibhaka in La- laos we have the word for one way street or one way road ek disha mark there can be no better word than that for the aeroplane in thai it is akad gyan akashyan sab you and then we have uh, the word you know, the newly coined which is now a part of the dictionary prepared uh, by the commission for scientific and technical terminology for multi purpose multi purpose is bahuddeshiya we use this word in hindi, hindi as well in, in, in sanskrit works you know, the sanskrit is have adopted it but the word which is in use in thai is aneka prasong aneka prasanga there is a very big tall building in the dhammasat university dhammasat is dharma shastra in thailand in the earlier period the universities were it started um, with an emphasis on certain disciplines you know like law so we had the earlier you know we had the university for law and then the other faculties also came up and it became a general university similarly there was a silpakara in the silpakorn as it is pronounced silpakara university for arts and crafts and the kaser sat the krishna shastra university for agriculture like this so we have the, that tall building is called the sala in the southeast asian languages the all uh, the the sibilants they are turned into dental you know the uh, palatals and the cerebrals they will be pronounced as sir only rishi is a rasi it's a musical rasi so it is uh, sala aneka prasong multi purposeability i don't think there can be a better word than this i'm told this word is in use in telugu as well you know they say it is aneka prasong aneka prasong so there is therefore a big corpus of us, the words which are drawn from sanskrit we have uh, the uh, universities we have the word mahavidyalaya it is pronounced as such the colleges are vidyalayas and uh, the montessori schools is uh, anuban anupala the vocational schools are achip ajiva and uh, the names of uh, the degrees you know we have ba ma etc but you now there the, the names of the degrees you can mark for the ba degree we have the name bandit ba is pronounced as ba according to thai phonology so we are pandit the ba in thailand the ba would be called pandit ma will be maha pandit 
and phd will be dusadi pandit tushti pandit and for research the word is vichaya the collection it is a sanskrit word typical sanskrit word the names of the university officials they are all drawn from sanskrit the faculty is called you know faculty of art cities akshon sat the akshara shastra the dean of the faculty is called khanavadi the ganapati and the vice chancellor or the president of the university is called as adhikan pati adhikar pati shastrana ha जानेवल सूत्रूपेण अत्रस्थाप्य सुखीयासंहरा So your memory is something which is remarkable. At the age of 50, 60, I mean most no. of us have a serious problem. But at the age of 90, you are able to remarkably remember various events at 2 a.m. What happened at 5 uh, a.m. <laughs> so this is on the date. So thank you very much. Namaste. So now I invite Professor Subhash Kak to please. thank you thank you very much i am delighted to be a part of this uh, plenary session i just want to talk about a couple of things um, anuradha ji uh, wants me to or wanted me to speak of uh, the significance of sanskrit at this particular point of time uh, from a western perspective you know here i'm sitting in the us um what do we see uh, let's say for an american academic or an american intellectual uh, as uh, the future role of sanskrit okay so this is roughly what i'm going to touch upon well um, first of all there is tremendous interest in sanskrit uh, in the west uh, amongst uh, certain circles and uh, this interest uh, derives from two uh, uh, perspectives the first is the continuing search um in europe or euro america uh, of the origins of uh, their own uh, tradition and especially uh, before christianization for example um, it has been uh, increasingly uh, increasingly discussed in the literature how before christianization in the slavic world the highest divinity was called shvetovid and uh, shvetovid had four faces um, the knower of light shvetovid right and the four faces were the north face was called swarga the western face was called uh, parkunis or parjanya the southern face was called lada which is another name for earth and the eastern face was called mokosh or moksha so this is in uh, the old slavic language i, I i'm not uh, uh interposing these names and uh, what's interesting is that uh, now scholars are tracing uh, the uh, the diffusion of um shiva or maheshwara right from central asia through uh, sogdia which is uh, the old name for samarkand uh, or that region on to the slavic world because the sogdians were uh, these merchants who uh, travel all across central asia from the caspian sea to china so this is one aspect that uh, people do realize that uh, uh, knowledge of sanskrit and knowledge of sanskrit tradition 
is going to be helpful uh, there for Europe's own self-discovery. The second point is uh, related to the very frontier of science. And the very frontier of science is um, the puzzle or the mystery of consciousness, uh, whether you approach it from the perspective of physics um, or computer science or neuroscience, the ultimate uh, frontier is um, consciousness. And as we know, consciousness is the very heart of uh, the Vedic tradition or Atma Vidya, right? And uh, this uh, uh, Vedic tradition uh, has already uh, seeded some of the most central ideas in modern science and even quantum mechanics, which is the uh, deepest uh, theory of science or theory of physics had its birth uh, in um, the work or in the inspiration that its co-creator, co-discoverer, Erwin Schrodinger, the Austrian physicist who's also a Vedantin, who in his own autobiography claims that the Upanishadic Mahavakya, I am Atma Brahma, gave him the central idea of a quantum state being a uh, superposition of all possibilities. So it has already seeded uh, uh quantum mechanics and quantum mechanics is the science which made a transition from previous uh, physics where there was no place for observer in quantum mechanics there is a place for observer and therefore from the back door we have brought in consciousness and now with the uh, crisis that physics is facing that it has to postulate 96 percent of dark matter and dark energy it's quite possible that this uh, crisis could be resolved if uh, the place for observer uh, is understood much better because just as 120 years ago with relativity the observers uh, place in the in the uh, measurement process uh, related to light uh, first of all revealed uh, new aspects of physical reality uh, and also resolve certain questions that existed at that time. I personally, I see, and this is something that I work on myself. Personally, I see that uh, if we bring in the individual, the self, uh, in a much more new way, and we don't quite know what it, what it must be at this particular point in time, it's possible that uh, this crisis would be resolved. And, and therefore, uh, really, uh, the uh, key to making progress is possibly to go back to uh, the Shastric texts that we have in India, which have looked at this question from so many different perspectives. Um, you know, we um, uh, even in our ritual, as we know, um, um, the, the the conscious self or Shiva, Shiva is uh, seen uh, in um, in um, the uh, Sri Vidya, for example. Um, Shiva is right in the center. So the more you explore reality, the more you explore uh, Prakriti, um, you find uh, explanations. But the self uh, is always beyond because, and the reason, as the Upanishads tell us, is that uh, the self is uh, the individual himself. Uh, because uh, Shivoham, she, self resides within us, and therefore, unless we have ways of turning the gaze on ourselves, our gaze is always directed outside, out, away from us. So, how to do that is the uh, challenge that uh, science uh, uh, faces. And in my view, um, the Shastric knowledge that we have from uh, uh, within uh, our Sanskrit texts is going to provide uh, some central um, uh, notions or, 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 or ideas which would help us uh, uh, go further. So this is uh, why there is a lot of interest. Now, what are the challenges? The challenge is because of colonialism and uh, India's history, um, what has happened is that at best, Sanskrit has been provincialized. It can stay in a corner. It's not the central vehicle. Sanskrit was uh, the universal language of knowledge, right? It, it has always been. And I think it should again find that place, but it cannot find that place unless we reclaim it. We reclaim it ourselves. You know, you have to fight these battles and reclaim it. And for that, what has got to be done, and, and of course, there are lots of challenges related to curriculum, etc., because 
even Indians who love India and Sanskrit have also, we, our own minds have become colonized. We are looking at Sanskrit and Indian history and the Shastras from a Western lens. What we have to do is to find its centrality within the Indian tradition and not as a sectarian or as a regional thing, but as uh, something universal because all of Indian tradition, all of the Shastras are uh, universal. And therefore, uh, what we have to do is, in my view, just to tie it up very, very quickly, <laughs> is um, uh, first of all, uh, bring in other world literature also into Sanskrit. We must have a, uh, a, a big project in India where, so let's say, the 100 great books of the West are translated in some form, in an abridged form, for example, or 50 great novels or literary texts from the West as well are brought into Sanskrit. So with this, I stop that uh, there is a tremendous uh, opportunity of different kinds, both scientific and literary, for Sanskrit to find its true place. And the rest of the world is waiting for you guys, Anuradha ji, to take charge. And, and, and we'd be grateful to you forever. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Subhash. So now I request Professor Chamu Krishna Shastri ji. Sarve Shamkrite Mama Namaskaraha. Mama Suchana Asti, Samskruta Bharati, Samskruta Samvardhana Pratishthanam, Tathacha Bharatiya Jnana Parampara Vibhagaha, Shiksha Mantra Leyase Bharatiya Jnana Pranali Vibhagaha, Trayanam Vishaye Vaktavyam Iti. Aham Samskrute Vadami, Prayatnam Karomi, Mandam Mandam Saralam Vaktum. Pratama Samskruta Sya Bhavishyam Iti, Asya Karyakrama Sya Mukhya Vishayaha Asti. Samskruta Sya Bhavishyam Ujjwalam asti iti kimartham bharatasya pradhana mantri samskruta prachara karyakarta asti. See July, August, July, August masasya, etat pashyatu, August masasya, ghatanam pashyatu. Trivaram Narendra Modi Mahodayaha. Samskrutasya Vishaye Tweet Krutavan Pracharam Krutavan Samskruta Saptahasya Udgatana Vasare Patradwara Samskrutasya Pracharam Krutavan Shravana Purnima Dine Samskruta Divasa Dine Tweet Madhyamena Samskruta Pracharam Krutavan Adya Manki Bhatamadye Shad Nimesha Apekshaya Adhika Kalam Samskrutasya Varnanam Krutavan Bahu Vishayanam Sparsham Krutavan Avarsham Sampurna Varshe Pratyeka Bhashane Saha Samskrutasya Subhashitam Vadati Subhashita Kathanat Purvam Veda Mantram Vadati Shloka Kathanat Purvam Sahayakam Vakyam Vadati Adhyapi Uktavan Hamare Yaha Shastro Me Kaha He Iti Ekam Vakyam Vadati Kimartam Tad Vakyam Vadati Chintetu Saha Sampurna Bharata Jana Manasam Prachina Bharati Paramparaya Saha Yoja Itu Michati Connect Kartu Michati Idani Mete Disconnect Tasti Tatu Connect Karoti so, Yadi Evam Bharatasya Pradhana Mantri Eva Evam Yadi Samskruta Pracharam Karoti Tarhi Asmakam Ka Chinta Chinta Eva Karinia Nasti Nishchita Rupena Itaf Param Samskrutasya Suvarna Kalasya Aram Bhavati Iti Pratama Vishayaha Dutiyam Samskruta Bharati Samskruta Samvardhana Pratishtanam IKS Division of the Ministry Trini Samskritasya Trini greatest challenges Atava greatest needs Edepi Bahu needs Santi Parantu Trini most important needs are addressed by these three institutions 
प्रथमं संपूर्ण भारते जनमानसे संस्कृता अनुकूल वातावरण निर्माण करनीय यदि वृष्टि भवती भूमि आर्द्रा भवती तदा कृषि कर्षण कार्य कर्त शक्य तत्कार्य संस्कृत भारती करोति संस्कृत संभाषण मध्यम संपूर्ण देशे जनमानस पिवर्तन करोति संभाषण कर्त शक्य श्रद्धा निर्माण करोति कार्यकर्तृण निर्माण करोति संघटन करोति संपूर्ण देशे विश्वे सर्वत्र संस्कृत लोकव्यापीकरण कार्य संस्कृत भारती करोति अतः अभी भविष्य उज्ज्वल संस्कृत संवर्धन प्रतिष्ठान विद्याल विश्वविद्याल महाविद्याल फॉर्मल एजुकेशन यदस्ति संस्कृत शिक्षण व्यवस्था तत्र परिवर्तनार्थम प्रयत्न करोति सर्वत्र संस्कृत भाषा भवेत तरी अद्य पर्यत संस्कृत शिक्षण त्रय आयामा आसन ओनली थ्री डायमेंशन ऑफ देर वेर थ्री डायमेंशन ऑफ संस्कृत टीचिंग टीचिंग लैंग्वेज टीचिंग लिटरेचर टीचिंग शास्त्र नाउ संस्कृत प्रमोशन फाउंडेशन हेज क्रिएटेड ए फोर्थ डायमेंशन संस्कृत फॉर स्पेसिफिक पर्पस संस्कृत फॉर योग संस्कृत फॉर आयुर्वेद संस्कृत फॉर वेदांत संस्कृत फॉर भगवदगीता संस्कृत फॉर नाट्यशास्त्र प्रकार बहव पाठ्यक्रम नूत पाठ्यक्रम निर्मिता संस्कृत संवर्धन प्रतिष्ठान इन बहु कार्या सी सो स्कूल एजुकेशन तयर एजुकेशन पर्यत संस्कृत शिक्षण पाठन विधौ पाठ्यक्रमे पाठ्यपुस्तक शिक्षक प्रशिक्षण सर्वेश विषयेश पिवर्तन कार्य संवर्धन प्रतिष्ठान करोति ईकेस डिविजन ऑफ द मंत्रालय सर्वकार से तत्विभाग द्वारा संस्कृत वांगमये यत ज्ञानमस्ति तस्य प्रकाशन कार्य वस्तुतः बवंतः सर्वे तदेव कुर्वन्ति सो तत्सर्भे अहम संक्षेपेण उक्त्वा समाप्ति करोमि तत्र इंडियन नॉलेज सिस्टम इति शब्द प्रयोगम सर्वे कुर्वन्ति उत्तम इंडियन नॉलेज सिस्टम इत्यन सर्व भारतीय भाषासु विद्यमान ज्ञान प्रणाली अंतर्भवति उत्तम परंतु न्यू एत नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी एन ई पी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी मध्य पैराग्राफ फोर्टीन पॉइंट वन सेवेन मध्य संस्कृत नॉलेज सिस्टम शब्द प्रयोग कृता वै संस्कृत नॉलेज सिस्टम प्रयोग कृता अमेक उदाहरण वादा इसी अकॉर्डिंग टू नेशनल मैनुस्क्रिप्ट मिशन इन तत्र सर्वे in the available manuscripts 40 lakhs manuscripts which are uh, available in around 3800 collections 74% of the manuscripts are in sanskrit language 26% of the manuscripts are in other indian languages tarhi bharatasya jnana paramparayaha 74 परसेंट इज इन संस्कृत लैंग्वेज दैट इज वाई संस्कृत नॉलेज सिस्टम इति बहु महत्व बवती थ्री फोर्थ ऑफ द नॉलेज सिस्टम इज इन संस्कृत गिव क्रेडिट टू संस्कृत इंडियन नॉलेज सिस्टम इति वदती चेत मैलेज भारत से बवती सर्व भारतीय भाषण बवती उत्तम We are happy. That's happy, Bhavatu. Parantu, unless and until you highlight Sanskrit knowledge system, Sanskrit will not be will, will not get high, mileage. Jana ha Sanskritam na patanti. People will uh, be interested in reading translations, not original Sanskritam. 
सेकेंडरी सोर्स मध्य चाट मध्य मेनी पीपल आर रईटिंग प्लीज टू डू ट्रांसलेन वी वॉन्ट ट्रांसलेन वी वॉन्ट टू एंजॉय another 100 years another 200 years people will read only translations not sanskritam that is why we want people to read access primary sources ataha sanskritam pathaniyam ataha sanskrit knowledge system siti nutana shabda prayogah new education policy madhye asti so indian knowledge system ityapi vadamah sanskrit knowledge system ityapi vadamah punascha अंते एतावदेव वदामी अंटिल नाउ संस्कृत वाज टॉट थ्रू अदर लैंग्वेजेस इत परम हियर आफ्टर संस्कृत विल बी टॉट थ्रू संस्कृत लैंग्वेज तथापि न्यू एजुकेशन एतद पॉलिसी मध्ये अस्ति एनईपी 2020 मध्ये टारगेट लैंग्वेज द्वारा संस्कृत शिक्षणम इति पुनश्च अद्य पर्यंतम there was no stepping stone either ekatra ground level madhye matra bhasha then the next level higher pedestrian tatra prauda kavyatmaka shastriya sanskrita bhasha prauda flowery madhye sopana rupena kimapi na asit now सरल मानक संस्कृत सिंपल स्टैंडर्ड संस्कृत इज अवेलेबल एनईपी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी आलो स्पीक्स दट इट डायरेक्ट दट टेक्स्ट बुक्स शुड बी रिटर्न इन सिंपल स्टैंडर्ड संस्कृत फॉर टीचिंग संस्कृत थ्रू संस्कृत सो दिस वे संस्कृति इज गोइंग टू बी ए बिग मूवेंट अग्रिम ट्वेंटी इयर्स मध्य केवल संस्कृत पठति नो फ्यूचर केवल शास्त्र पठति नो फ्यूचर केवल मॉडर्न सैंस पठति केवल स्टेम पठति दर्ट बी मच प्रोग्रेस केवल हिस्ट्री पठति केवल पोलिटिकल सैंस पठति केवल ला पठति न भविष्य नास्ति न व्यक्ति भविष्य न भारत भविष्य पश्चिम चिंतन आधारेण नव भारत निर्माण न साध्यम अंतिम बिंदु मम भारत निर्माण भारतीय तत्व आधारेण नूतन व्यवस्था रचनीय यदि नव भारत निर्माण नूतन पर्याय व्यवस्था रचनीय तरी तदर्थ संस्कृत अनिवार्य संस्कृत ज्ञान प्रणाल्या विद्यम ज्ञान आधारेण नव ज्ञान सामज निर्माण करनीय नव ज्ञान भारत निर्माण करनीय संस्कृत भाषा विश्वभाषा विश्वभाषाया विश्वधर्म अस्त विश्वधर्मेण विश्वशा साध्या तादृश नव भारत निर्माण वदत संस्कृत जयत भारत अनेक धन्यवाद संप्रति अहम अनिल कुमार गौरी शेटि महाशय आह्वया सो गौरी शेटि सो आई कैन टेक लिबर्टी यू शुड जस्ट कन्फाइन टू सिक्स टू एट मिनिट्स नमस्ते my sincere thanks to the organizing team for inviting me as a panelist i mean it is indeed a special moment to be part of a program conducted by my alma mater iit kharagpur where i had spent six and of wonderful years as part of my higher studies my association with sanskrit promotion started from kharagpur days only when i was part of a team which organized spoken sanskrit classes way back in 2005 having academic background in nuclear physics as told by ramasubramanian mahodaya certainly i am not an expert in sanskrit but a sanskrit anuragi i have been invited to share my thoughts on future of sanskrit as a representative of the sanskrit club at iit roorkee i have also been asked to share my thoughts as a representative of a networking group samarpanam which is an acronym for sanskritaya arpanam which was launched last year it is an initiative of students and faculty from institutions of national importance to promote sanskrit and allied areas i must sincerely thank ramasubramanian mahodaya for his help 
in establishing the club and we are benefiting from the continuous guidance from him and various scholars present in this meeting and also scholars across the world just for the sake of information the student volunteers of the sanskrit club were able to conduct various workshops on sanskrit knowledge systems live performance of vedic chanting by students during the beginning of annual convocation at iit roorkee this is when i came to know the relation between a student and a teacher beautifully explained in shikshavalli of taitariya upanishad a strong library is maintained regular spoken sanskrit workshops right now one workshop is going on guest lectures sanskrit week celebrations internships for more than 20 ug students first ever sanskrit hackathon in 2020 so please consider all this as a data points only and the event which helped to go beyond the campus was subhashitam sanskritam a five level online sanskrit course which was organized from july 2020 to january 2021 in association with sanskrit bharati around 5000 plus participants from 30 countries have cleared first level and around 2500 participants have cleared fine final level this shows the interest among people of various age group across the world ensuring the better future of sanskrit coming to the samarpanam the group has organized first ever conclave on sanskrit last year currently the members are from seven iits icr pune and triple it hyderabad on behalf of samarpanam i am glad to announce a new activity that is sanskrit knowledge systems presentation series the purpose of this presentation series is to provide a platform for those working in sanskrit knowledge systems to present their work discuss how to take it further and collaborate with others on similar works the details will be shared very soon through the website samarpanam.net and the group is confident that the presentation series will enable people to describe small tidbits of the language from the primary sources in sanskrit not in translations when i came to know the theme of the panel discussion the following questions came to my mind kimartham sanskritasya bhavishyam nischetavyam sanskritasya bhavishyam kidrusham syat sanskritasya bhavishyam sushtu kartum kim karaniyam sanskritasya bhavishyam kesham haste as i am representing the sanskrit club and samarpanam it's quite natural that i have requested the people associated with these two groups directly and indirectly to share their thoughts and i'm really glad to receive hundreds of responses and it is my pleasure to present a very few of them in front of you because of time constraints for all knowledge systems in sanskrit to survive in future the base of the pyramid is the number of people who can make basic conversation in sanskrit and if the base is big the pyramid can be taller so it is very important to take basic spoken sanskrit to as many people as possible so let us utilize the technology to take the basic spoken sanskrit to as many people as possible and following idea i have received from one of the alumnus of iit roorkee sanskrit texts make you question things like the nasadiya sutra in the rigveda which was quoted by astronomer carl sagan you can see i am speaking the language of students i think i can take the liberty of uh, utilizing this panel discussion to represent the thoughts of the students so astronomer carl sagan in discussing india's tradition of skeptical questioning and unself conscious humility before the great cosmic mysteries sanskrit is a teacher that doesn't just teach it shows you the way to teach yourself and this is the key role sanskrit as a language can play in the future and on a social level sanskrit is regaining its role as a unifier language people within india and abroad are looking at youtube and researching more and more to connect and rediscover their identity all of this discoveries is mostly rooted in sanskrit that is another place it will play a role in the future and one interesting suggestion i have received the future of sanskrit will also have to contend with various threats in the era of fake news and misinformation so false claims made in the name of sanskrit can dampen its appeal to the so called rational audiences another alumnus of iit roorkee sent the following suggestion 
a lot of people are interested in sanskrit and things related to sanskrit however not everyone is satisfactory by merely learning basic spoken sanskrit engineering students are interested in the knowledge embedded in sanskrit knowledge systems which can be applied to modern day world to solve problems or improve living standards such as distribution of resources and duties across village or town population to ensure availability of clean water and air for all of course this will require insights from traditions legal systems and engineering solutions such as small community dams for this we need faculty members who are trained in both modern research methodology and bharatiya guru parampara so that they can guide the students and also can develop courses let me share final uh, suggestion who is an alumnus of iit kharagpur in order to strengthen sanskrit we would have to strengthen the indian regional languages and it is very well known the deep and profit, profound impact of sanskrit on indian languages the act proposal to have techno managerial education in indian languages is a great move towards bolstering sanskrit eventually for example iit kharagpur can have a functional bangla program in the first year for all those who are coming outside the geo linguistic local of bangla the way ias officers who get the bangla cadre for their service strengthening bangla on the kgp campus would inevitably serve the case and cause of sanskrit the way bolstering tamil on iit madras campus or assamese on iit guwahati campus in the spirit of atmanirbhar bharat if the teachers during their classes can culturally contextualize their lectures say by giving some space for indian names it would go a long way in promoting sanskrit one very good example could be the impact of using indian names in the famous concepts of physics textbook by professor hc verma is well known in iit rurki still the students share with me the experience they have while solving the problems having the names you know having indian background names so if researchers working in sanskrit knowledge systems in the fields of chemistry metallurgy medicine or any other area come up with one path breaking discovery i am sure there will be huge interest from research point of view i am sure sanskrit club and samarpanam teams will play their role by acting as a bridge between the people working in these research areas at the end i must say the celebrations of 150th birth anniversary of rishi arbindo are going on and i recollect what he had said once all problems of existence are essentially problems of harmony i personally feel that sanskrit can play a big role in solving the problems of harmony sushtu sanskrit bhavishya nirmane asmakam eva uttar dayitvam thanks to one and all thank you professor gauri shetty uh, so you had uh, suggested several interesting things collating various inputs from various people so each one theme can be developed and we can have <laughs> 50 hours of seminar but uh, we will do it later now i request the ambassador to just share his views thank you very much uh, chair uh, thank you very much also to the director iit uh, for having uh, welcomed me a few minutes ago distinguished professors and of course thanks to anurada choudhury uh mr ramasubramanian you used the word generosity uh when you refer to uh, anurada and uh, i think uh, this is exactly uh the word that uh, we need to use when 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 referring to her i i i have just met her recently and uh, this is the the impression she gives is of someone who is willing to listen but of course also uh willing to to share and to and to give um it is a very big pleasure to be part of this conversation and also to 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 get to know the family of uh, iit karakpur to get to know his uh, director uh, virtually i am asked to speak tonight but i feel my role here should be more to to listen i mean to stay quiet and 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 to learn from 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 all of you 
I say this uh, because I, I feel a bit like an outsider uh, when, 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 I mean, when Anurada asked me to, 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 to come today, I, I, I felt it, but, but I, I feel it even more now that I'm, I'm, I'm listening to, to all of you. Maybe outsider is a, is, a, is, a, is a strong word. Maybe a softer word would be good, like intruder, maybe. I'm, I, I feel I'm, 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 I'm entering this conversation without, uh, without really being, uh, you know, without really having a, a role in it. It's true, I have been learning Hindi and uh, for many years uh, because I believe uh, languages, modern and ancient, are the access to cultures, the open world. I lived here for four years, uh, a decade ago, and, and, and I'm here again. So it's, it's just natural no, for me to, 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 to have engaged in this, in this journey with, uh, with, with, with Hindi. But unfortunately, I have not ventured yet into Sanskrit. And in the same way I feel a bit as an intruder, I imagine you might also be wondering what am I doing here and what's the relation of the Dominican Republic, a country of Hispanic origin situated thousands of kilometers away. So what's the relation between the Dominican Republic and Sanskrit. And indeed, there is no natural relation at all between the Dominican Republic and, and, and Sanskrit. And let's say that this relation that I've just discovered was a surprise to me. And I'll tell you uh, a bit about it. I arrived to India as an ambassador in the month of uh, February 2021, so a couple uh, of, of uh, months ago. And I mean, my, my, my program as a, as a diplomat, and this is something I, I, I believe since I started this, this work, is that, of course, we have uh, political relations and that they are important. Uh, we have business and business has been growing between India and the Dominican uh, Republic. I mean, India has, a, let's say, a, has opened up to the world, has a bigger role in the world, and it's just natural that business grows with all the countries all around the world. But what I really believe uh, and, and that our role as diplomat is, is, is to foster people to people contact. And uh, this can be done through many ways, but I, I think that amongst them, the, the most important ones are exchange of knowledge, exchange of experiences, and uh, foster joint initiatives in research. Um, there are areas in which India and the Dominican Republic can learn from each other. One, one example is tropical medicine. For example, we have the same kind of tropical diseases, dengue, chikungunya, uh, Zika, you name them, you know, and we have been doing research in our institutes there because it's a challenge for us. But in India also, there are institutes that have been doing fantastic research in that, in, 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 in that field. There are fields where, where, where India is way more advanced than the Dominican Republic. I mean, astrophysics, uh, space operation, uh, space exploration. I mean, the Dominican Republic is just now starting to think about, about these possibilities. No? And India has, since the 60s, uh, very, very strong uh, institutions and, and initiatives. And in this field, I, I, I believe India can, can teach us a lot. No? So in some ways, we exchange. In some way, we take from one side and, and, and we learn from, from, from that side. No? And one of the main links I have discovered uh, between the Dominican Republic and, and India is a link that, that, that is precisely uh, based on, 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 on something that goes beyond politics, that goes beyond economics, and is the interest that has been uh, growing in the Dominican Republic for yoga, for ancient knowledge uh, of, uh, of, of, of India, and for Ayurveda, so for, for many disciplines that have been there in India for, for, for ages. And what is interesting here is that it's, a, it's an individual link. I mean, there are people, there are individuals in the Dominican Republic who have a desire to know, and they have the desire to, to search for this knowledge. This knowledge is in India. They have a desire to expand uh, their mind, to maybe change their way of living, uh, to find uh, answers to the questions that uh, they have uh, today. And I, I always put this example is that during the pandemic, 
right? I mean, two years where, um, I mean, we, we couldn't travel, uh, we couldn't connect, I mean, uh, politically, very little uh, interactions, uh, trade uh, went down because <laughs> uh, there was, there was uh, less possibility to exchange goods. Uh, but this community was still practicing yoga in the Dominican Republic. The teachers were still teaching yoga in the Dominican Republic. And uh, there were online courses that were still uh, being, uh, you know, generated between India and, and the Dominican Republic. And this happens, I mean, without the help of, uh, of us diplomats, without the help of, of us, uh, uh, I mean, of, of politicians, it's just something that, that, that happens uh, very, very organically. So taking into consideration this, uh, when I uh, arrived here, I, I immediately thought that uh, we need to enrich or, or we need to nurture that, uh, that uh, link that is already there. And uh, the first idea I had was to organize a conference uh, by a renowned scholar of uh, Sanskrit, Mr. Oscar Pujols, who is one of the leading Sanskritist of, of the Spanish-speaking world. And I asked him to, to, to give a lecture to this community in the Dominican Republic on the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Oscar Puyols translated to Spanish uh, Yoga Sutras of Patanjali a couple of years ago. It was a translation made with commentaries and a translation that was not taught for the academic public, but precisely uh, uh, for, for, for that vast, vast, vast amount of people in Spain and in Latin America, in Mexico, in Argentina, in Peru, and in the Dominican Republic, uh, who are eager uh, to know more about the practices that they have already uh, been, been doing. The conference was really, 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 really uh, fantastic. There were many questions after the conference, but what came out from the conference was really, really what I was not expecting at all. Some uh, students said that uh, it was very good that uh, Oscar Pujols had translated Yoga Sutras in, in, into Spanish. It was very good that the conference had been given in Spanish, but that they wanted to go a, a step further and, 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 and they wanted to learn Sanskrit. And then they, they, they asked me as a diplomat, as Embassy of Dominican Republic, they told me it's great and we want to have more conferences about uh, Indian knowledge systems, about the uh, Indian traditions. But we would also like to request you to explore the possibility uh, to see uh, if uh, there is ways uh, to, to, to start a program uh, of Sanskrit uh, for uh, the people interested in the Dominican Republic. As I have mentioned to, to Anurada when we, we spoke about this, I don't know how many people we are talking about. I, it might be 10 people, it might be uh, uh, 15 people, but I, I don't think that's, that's I, I will finish yet. I don't think that's what's uh, 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 really important. And, and at the end, what I just want you know, there are seeds around the world uh, that we are not uh, seeing, and seeds for Sanskrit, and that for Sanskrit, and that Sanskrit can grow in unexpected, uh, very, very unexpected ways in unexpected places. And the challenge is really to find the way to nurture that. Interest. Thank you very much. So, thank you very much, uh, so Ambassador. So it was very interesting to know the kind of interest that uh, we have there. Now, Anuradha, I should just take care of uh, five minutes, right? To just summarize and... Uh... Um, Kripaya, I'm just in the okay. interest of time. Uh, maybe you could just... Uh, okay. If you could just... <laughs> okay. And if there's any last comments that anybody... Any closing comments, because the topic is really future of Sanskrit. So just their parting messages would be wonderful to hear. Like, what is their appeal? I know I restricted them with a specific topics, but if they'd like to just ask Uttamam no. Bhavishyati. I mean, just say See, something. Interesting, interestingly, the ambassador introduced himself as an intruder. He is an invitee. I have been the intruder everywhere. See, So unfortunately, she put me in a position where I had to intrude. I'm so sorry for this. <laughs> so to all the panelists, so I had to interrupt and then say that we may have to uh, wind up their own sessions. Now, so there are very, very interesting things which were uh, mentioned by various people. So we found initially our uh, Satyavat Shastriji mentioning how Sanskrit language has really influenced so various countries and how various uh, words have been coined whose base are in Sanskrit. In fact, uh, even during his talk, 
So, so Gauri Shetty was also mentioning so how we can actually promote it by giving the names of the various buildings, uh, giving various devices name of Sanskrit, so that itself will actually help. That is, in fact, one of the ways by which we will be able to, even if, even if the government is not favorite, so we will be able to do something. Okay, so this is one of the means which have been suggested. Uh, in fact, um, Professor Subhash Kak was mentioning how certain very, very intricate concepts that we deal with in science have been influenced by thoughts which are available in Sanskrit. So this is another rich field. So we have done very significant work, particularly in terms of how the brain has been functioning. So this has to do with Vedanta, this has to do with yoga, this has to do with various other disciplines. So this is another interesting point which Dr. Professor Subhashkak was mentioning. So how deep studies in these fields in parallel with those studies which are done elsewhere can actually give us some clue as to where we can move ahead. In fact, there was a brilliant fields medalist who had um, mentioned in one other place the trouble with physics. So what he basically says is, so the fundamental concepts in physics, I mean, there is nothing much which has evolved. Technology has evolved. So beyond 1930s, 1940s, there has been really no breakthrough. So that is the kind of thing that he is trying to convey in his book. So in order to have fundamental breakthrough in certain disciplines, I think we have to move from field to field and then see if there is some concurrence, if there is some difference, how one can make such breakthroughs. So I think that is a very important point which was made by him. And then, uh, of course, uh, as usual, so I found in the screen, so so many people clapping when uh, Professor Chamu Krishna Shastri was coming up with <laughs> various ideas as to how we should be able to promote Sanskrit. In fact, uh, so this Sanskrit Promotion Foundation, so is equivalent to Krishna Shastri Promotion Foundation. So I must tell you that I was really, really, really impressed. So the kind of work that he has been doing and recently, so just now he was mentioning to us that, uh, so he says, see, so for various disciplines we have developed for Ayurveda, so for Shastra, for Gita, for various things, I mean, he may, for physics, for chemistry, he may say. But if you look at these texts, it is primarily to make people learn Sanskrit. So that is all it is. So this is a very, very important thing. I mean, the strategy is really uh, appreciated. I really, really welcome. So whether when they are learning a little bit of Sanskrit, so whether it is Ayurveda, you learn one particular uh, verse and then try to analyze. There may be some 24 verses which will be listed. And from the verse, I mean, you primarily teach Sanskrit. So this is very, very important. And uh, Finally, I must tell you, this uh, remark which was made by Aravindo, so particularly to bring in harmony, I would just say this is ultimate purpose of learning Sanskrit. So we may be doing excellent work in STEM, we may be doing excellent work in various fields, but until there is internal harmony and harmony across nations, most important thing is internal harmony. If there is internal harmony, we can easily spread it externally. So this lack of internal harmony is what is the basic problem. And I think this is something which this rich heritage, which is embedded in this language, as Chamu Krishna Shastri was mentioning, so he is to provide to the world. So this is something which is inevitable, I will say. See, after all, how long can you keep on dealing with equations? You will really go mad. But if you read a beautiful Sanskrit from Shakuntalam, I mean, it will elevate you to higher planes. So let me just give you only one verse from Shakuntalam. Even he was mentioning our uh, Shastriji when he went to Thailand. So this is very, very beautiful in Meghadutam. So I'll just tell you, Panchedvayo Saradi Saralas Kandha Sanghatta Janma Badhe Tol Kakshapita Chamari Palabharo Davagnihi Arhasyenam shamayitumalam varithara sahasrihi apan arti prasamana phala sampado yutamanam. What is he conveying? This is Sandesha to the Megha. He says, This is a very, very profound message. What I am trying to convey here is so you may be teaching literature, but profound messages are embedded which are most important for your life. He says to the Megha, so essentially, as you are just traveling, you may find forest fires in various places. 
he says why is this forest fire generated prasa tanche dvayo sarati saralas kandha sanghatta janma the physics of it basically the friction that is generated through the branches it would have generated various forest fires sarati saralas kandha sanghatta janma see the observation amazing sarati saralas kandha sanghatta janma then what is the effect of it बाधे तोलक प्रसमित फल बालभारोदवाग्निंग दिस मेघा दट दिस फयर इफ इट इज इन फॉरेस्ट इट इज ओके बट एनिमल्स आर बीइंग हर्ट बिकॉज ऑफ दैट सो देयर टेल्स आर कैचिंग फायर एंड दे प्रोपगेट दैट सो व्हाट इज सिट दैट यू आर सपोज टू डू ही टेल्स दिस इज द मेसेज दैट आई वांट टू कन्वे arhasyenam shamayitu malam the moment you see that you go on shower torrential pour should be there to subside the forest fire this is the request that this person is making you see that is the message that poet wants to convey that is the beauty of kavya and there are thousands and thousands of kavya and the most important thing in the fourth quarter of the verse is he just this is called arthantaranya salankara he says आपन्नार्ति प्रशमन फला संपदो व्हाट इट से आपन्न आर्ति प्रशमन फला सो हि जस्ट से वेल्थ दट एनीबडी प्रोसेस एस एस ए नोबल पर्सन इज प्राइमरीली मेन टू अलिविएट द अफ्लिक्शन ऑफ अदर्स सो यू आर अ नोबल पर्सन मे यू अलिविएट द अफ्लिक्शन ऑफ अदर्स सो दिस इज द कैंड ऑफ मेसेज दट इज बीइंग प्रोवाइडेड इफ वन लर्नस a part of sakuntala a part of any other work meghadeta kalidasa everywhere you will find shastra embedded in this worldly wisdom embedded in this moral values embedded in this it is for this reason there is no other reason forget about uh, various other things the beauty of the language the beauty of the verses the beauty of the meters and the kind of internal harmony that it can develop so this is the primary purpose for learning sanskrit and uh, with this so i would like to thank all the panelists so for having shared the brilliant ideas and the thoughtful messages which i think we should just develop and anuradha should not just keep one and a half hours and then put me into trouble later so i will never agree next time if she invites me and then says 8 minutes for the panelists so this is not going to work okay so anyway <laughs> so i have done so manage so we will uh, we have just exceeded about 10 minutes so with this uh, request uh, uh, i would uh, request the panelists if they have anything to share in one minute so then uh, so just to see or the audience if they have very quick questions we can very quickly take in about 5 minutes we may have to wind up thank you so anyway so if uh, i think uh, in the interest of time so we can actually restrict this i would like to personally uh, congratulate iit karakpur its director for having taken interest in this i know how various iits function how various officials function the idea is um, there is a bit of hesitation among various people ah there is a bit of hesitation among various people even if they feel at heart that i have to do something for this so but only a few people are able to take this bold step forward so otherwise i mean uh, how will the other fellow look at me is a basic problem which many of us have so not so that, that's why i would even congratulate gauri shetty so anuradha doing is nothing so whereas professor tiwari doing is something else so that is what i wanted to convey <laughs> see the point is so this is a bold step forward center for uh, indian knowledge systems excellence in indian knowledge system has been established so i don't think any other iit has this this is one of the most premier institutes and they have taken step forward in order to getting uh, this uh, institute this institution is something which is one of the oldest institutions of premier institutions in nation and the yatha raja tatha praja so therefore so uh, this is something which is a very very interesting coincidence that uh, 150th year 75 years of uh, independence and uh, we are celebrating various things and uh, i would uh, request chamu krishna shastri ji so he wanted to say something ekam uh, mama suggestion asti not only for karakpur iit 
all other iits and all universities all institutions if we really want to take to take iks uh, uh, research uh, forward then every subject department should have one sanskrit scholar available every day for them to uh, group study tarhi eva vishaya agre gachati anyatha kevalam bhashanam bhavishyate iks 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 iti if concrete karyam karaniyam tarhi have uh, mos with the sanskrit universities let uh, sanskrit scholars tatra uh, deputation madhe agachatu sanskrit research scholars internship krute atra iit sagachatu iit research scholars or uh, uh, professors sanskrit university gachatu athava appoint uh, young sanskrit shastra shastra scholars not just the ma phds appoint young shastra scholars in a, every department then iks will go uh, research will grow so thank you for thank you for your suggestion so every department i think is a little uh, too much to expect so at least if one small unit so wherein a couple of people are appointed i think that will be a great move forward so given the current situation so this uh, in fact as uh, mr subhash kak was mentioning so this is something which we have a lot of um, so in fact chamu krishna shastri was mentioning that we have fortunately a prime minister so who quotes various sanskrit i must tell you once i was literally shocked literally shocked at it was a pleasant surprise when uh, i have read various things in sanskrit from my childhood but uh, once i was just listening to this triggered this i was just listening to narendra modi in some interview and this was uh, i think before the election before uh, the second round of election somebody was provoking him so what is it that you want okay so then he said amazingly he quoted this verse spontaneously natvaham kamaye rajyam न स्वर्ग न पुनर्भव काम ये दुख तप्ताजिम kamaye dukha taptanam praninam aarti nashanam i only seek that so that i can serve the society who are really suffering by some means or other means this is what my prayer is so this is a beautiful passage which he quoted we are really really fortunate to have that but so he has to function among sadhus so we have to strengthen his hands only by promoting sanskrit and if the society actually builds the force then i don't think uh, we have to worry about the future of sanskrit with these few words i hand over to anuradha namaste anand bahu dhanyavada ha vayam satyam eva anugrihita asma yat etat etat artham anumatim datavan and uh, we're very very grateful that uh, the session went out went on the way it did but i would just like to invite our panelists asmakam just ekam antimam yat yadi kimapi vaktavyam asti asmakam shrotri ganebhya krate kripaya shrotri gananam krate kripaya ekam vakyam kimapi vadatu so just invite you to kindly share a few words uh, of uh, inspiration more than uh, uh, i i i was i was thinking uh, well yes. all the panelists have already said But I was thinking uh, that Russian gentleman Vladimir, I suppose, is he there? Yes, he's also there, sir. Ah, so I would like him to say something. He has heard uh, so many uh, panelists, and I would like to him to say something on this. Uh, sure. Sir. Panelists have said, and uh, we can still go to the panelists later on and get their views in detail and uh, com- compile the, those things. I think there should be compilation of if you have recorded, there should be compilation of what they have said. and uh, let us hear from our uh, gentleman from russia vladimir i don't know his exact name what yeah. you said uh-huh. vladimir i heard but i don't know the exact total name that you said so i would like to vladimir right i would like to listen because 
I have read little bit of uh, Russian because my father went to Russia in seventy one, and uh, he brought some books. So I I used I have read two years Russian in IIT Kharagpur as when I was a B Tech student, fine fourth year and final year, because that a uh, new language was we were asked to learn, and I learned Russian. I I could speak Russian. I used to sign in Russian uh, till about two three years or so. But after that, totally forgot. But I have the books. So I would like to hear something from Vladimir. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, um, it's a, it's an honor to be here in this great company with you together. And uh, of course, I attended shibiras of uh, Chamu Krishna Shastri many times. It was a wonderful event, and 21 days we were mentioning before with Anuradha together. <laughs> We were in that huge uh, event, 800 scholars in Delhi living together. Uh, yes, we were all inspired. I wanted to bring Sanskrit to Auroville. I lived in Auroville for 27 years. We started there to speak Sanskrit, only Sanskrit, because mother wanted Sanskrit in Auroville. It was such a such a kind of bright uh, days uh, that time. But uh, but then somehow you know the mediocre level uh, level of utility took us down down. Less and less people open their mouth. Uh, they become more utilitarian. You know how it is. You know how the middle level takes over. And then uh, and then now we have uh, uh, prime minister who is promoting Sanskrit, finally we come to that stage where it can be done. And now I'm in U.S. here, <laughs> far away from India. <laughs> so here also in our center, we are doing this work, promoting Sanskrit, studies of Rig Veda, of Upanishads, Gita. I think through literature, we can come closer through this brilliant, high-quality consciousness. That is what is to be promoted. And because language is a representative of that bright and luminous consciousness. And that's what we have to bring forward. And from that, we have to learn the language. And that may help. That, that may catch, uh, you know, all the people in India, intellectuals and those who are seeking uh, to develop themselves to the higher level. This is my message. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, thank you. I, I think I would like, I, we must also say that we have thanked all the panelists, but... Uh, I don't know, Nanuratha will definitely thank uh, Rama Subramaniam ji because uh, I saw him first time when the lecture was going on and uh, I think uh, he's a student, uh, the New Zealand uh, person, the lady from New Zealand. When we, they were explaining those, I was uh, amazed. I said, this is, these are the things which our young students, first year students, second year students will love to know that, oh, come on, this the the trigonometric formula comes out of the Sanskrit uh, slokas, I think uh, they will be simply excited. And uh, from that time, I became a fan of uh, Rama Subhanyam Ji and that lady. And uh, I think uh, they are in our, uh, possibly they are in our, uh, uh, um, the advisory board. Uh, and, uh, um, and we would love to have the first advisory board meeting because already the board has been passed by our, uh, um, on 1st of September, it will be uh, confirmed. The, um, uh, the board will be confirmed. So then we would like to have as early as possible in the first week of September, the advisory board meeting. And there we could learn from um, more people as to which way we should go ahead. Because our plan is that within next two to three years of time, we would like to invite the scholars from all over the world, come here, stay here, spend to about a minimum two months as the government of India has allowed, that the scholars can come and spend time and spend time with, with our students, fac faculty, and then I spread the knowledge of Sanskrit and all what is there in the Vedas and Upanishads. So I think uh, uh, I'm very happy that today uh, Ramasa Subramanian Ji conducted this panel, uh, panel discussion so well. And I know when he, when the first person was speaking, he was uh, <laughs> I feeling I could guess. So it happens like that, but I am very thankful to you, sir, that you have conducted so well. And uh, because of the um, lectures that those things are going on, and Anuradha is, is an inspiration to all of us because he is the 
George Bearer uh, in front of us, uh, we are behind that. So I, I think we are in the right hands and uh, we will get more and more advice from people like you, Jamu Sastriji, uh, our um, ambassador, uh, and uh, um, Vladimir Ji, the Kark Ji, and all other people who are uh, um, associated with this center. We want to really make it something like, maybe I will not be there, but in the next 10 years of time, it will be something like Takshila and um, maybe uh, Nalanda or something like that. This center no, no, will be part of You will be there, no doubt. <laughs> you uh, will be there. God knows, but I think this will be there. And uh, it should happen in IIT Kharagpur, which has come out of a uh, jail uh, from the martyrs uh, place we have come out. I think this is the right place for such a center. And uh, we need blessings from each one of you. Thank you very much. And Anuradhaji, you can conclude. So um, I would just like to invite the panelists just one last sentence, and then I'll hand it over to. I saw Professor Joycein was there, and uh, he's the uh, he's the chairperson of the Center of Excellence for Indian Knowledge Systems. And I invite him to just say a few words, and then hand it over to Professor Somesh Kumar sir to please give the vote of thanks. Okay, uh, just uh, very briefly, all uh, the wonderful things, uh, suggestions that have been made, I just want to make one more um, complimentary suggestion. You know, we are uh, all entering into an age where um, we need to properly leverage, you know, beyond the brick and mortar universities such as IIT Kharagpur and all the other great universities we have. And I think this also offers us an opportunity uh, that in addition to um, the very wonderful idea that we should be teaching the Shastric uh, knowledge in all the IITs and other universities, perhaps through the vehicle of a history of Indian science or some other department, you also have to navigate the politics, etc. of it. We should have a university which is an online university, you know, like the Nalanda that uh, Professor Tiwari talked about. In other words, create a wonderful resource uh, where uh, people can go to the text, should have a nice interface. Uh, what people should also, some thought should be given to the interface because uh, there are some interfaces which some other universities and IITs have created, which are not as nice as they should be. So fo focus on that as well and have in addition to a resource center, also a means for students from all over the world to interact with the faculty and perhaps have some credential credentialing system, because that's also important for lokachar, right? Credentials are important for people to speak to each other about how much they know or where do they want to go from where they are. Just this. Thank you. Yeah, we look forward also to your uh your guidance for us as we move on and also this idea of the online university i think it's something brilliant that we could consider seeding in some form or the other so i just would just like to mention take this opportunity to mention that at least at kharagpur as part of the sanskriti club and the uh, the center of indian knowledge systems we are conceiving of having a whole series of lectures on sanskrit and so we've done this week but we want to continue once a month at, at least and uh, build a repository of scholars who are sharing with us uh, different uh, understandings. And then we can go into the Shastras Award. But we have to see how to network with different organizations to make such things possible. Avashyam. So, go So, um, may I request uh, Anilji, would you like to please share your thoughts? No. Uh, yeah. Thank you so, so much for providing this opportunity, actually. Yeah. Thank you, Anilji. ಅಸ್ತುಮಾಪೇ <laughs> 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 just to thank you again i mean to 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 have allowed me to be part of this and and i i i believe that i i have learned a lot in i have learned more than i have given and uh, what i have learned is is to see this this very fertile uh, 
uh, all these initiatives that are there for, for, for Sanskrit. And this is what I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm looking for. I, I, need, I mean, I want to know more and see how we can link up uh, uh, some of these initiatives with, with, with the ground in, in, in the Dominican Republic. So basically this has been uh, very useful for me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So may I request uh, uh, um, Professor Ramasubramaniam ji, would you like to say anything else last? Yeah, yeah. Tom, Tom, Sarvam. <laughs> I don't want to... Maybe, uh, maybe you can ask uh, Harimohan Pillai. Harimohan. Harimohan, uh, ha, Dr. Harimohan Pillai ji. In fact, I would, like to mention, I would just like to mention that uh, Dr. Pillai has been one of the earliest uh, inspirations for Indian knowledge systems at IIT Kharagpur. He had wanted to do his thesis also in uh, Hindi, as he said, and work on the Vastu Shastra at that time in the 60s, if I remember clearly. So, uh, sir, uh, from you. Sabhi Mahanubhavon ko mera Dandavat Pranam. Shayad Kharagpur mein pahli baar Dandavat Pranam karne ka mauka mil raha hai, toh mujhe bhoat khushi hai. Kyunki aisa mauka bhoat varshon ke baad aya hai. Kharagpur ke janam honne ke baad. तो श्री रामसुब्रमण ने जो कुछ कहा आज मुझे अभी इस वक्त कहा एक बात मेरे मन में आई कि संस्कृत जो है श्रवण माधुर्य है संस्कृत सिर्फ एक ही भाषा है पूरी दुनिया में जो श्रवण माधुर्य है जो काव्य है और गीत है कोई भाषा नहीं है जिसको हम गा के बोला जा सकता है अभी वो जब प्रोफेसर रामसुब्रमण्यम कह रहे थे वो गा रहे थे वो बोल नहीं रहे थे तो हमको जो है इस भाषा को गीत के रूप में लोगों को सिखाना चाहिए मुझे शर्मा जी एक हमारे वहाँ उत्तर प्रदेश में पढ़ा हिंदी तो एक शर्मा जी प्रभा के हमसे संस्कृत में बात करते थे तो बिल्कुल वैसा मुझे लगा था कि शर्मा जी मेरे सामने बैठे हैं जब राम सुब्रमण्यम जी संस्कृत में बोल नहीं रहे थे गा रहे थे तो मेरे ख्याल में काव्य गीत और नवरस और भाव प्रधान है भाषा है इस भाषा को हमको इस तरह प्रमोट करना है क्योंकि ये काव्य गीत भाव और नवरस प्रदान है तो उस 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 हिसाब से हमें इस भाषा को आगे ले जाना है और इसको साइंस के साथ जोड़ना है साइंस और टेक्नोलॉजी के साथ जोड़ना है क्योंकि आफ्टर ऑल वी आर फ्रॉम इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी वर्किंग फॉर द कॉज ऑफ डेडिकेटेड टू द सर्विस ऑफ द नेशन था अब तक अब होना चाहिए डेडिकेटेड टू द संस्कृति ऑफ द नेशन बस इन दो शब्दों से मैं Uh, आप सबको बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद करना चाहूंगा और बहुत इच्छा है कि एक बार खर पर आऊ एक बार फिर से चार वर्ष हो गए मुझे आए हुए मैं अपने फोर्टी एथ रियूनियन में आया था 1978 में अब फिर से एक बार आना चाहता हूँ मेरी आज जॉयसन सर से बात हुई थी तो मैंने उनको एक सजेशन दिया था कि वास्तुविद्या टू से हमने जर्नी शुरू की थी मैंने और प्रोफेसर जॉयसन ने तो एक सजेशन मैंने दिया है कि हमको वास्तुविद्या टू थाउजेंड करना चाहिए एक बार फिर ताकि जहाँ छोड़ा था और आज 20 वर्षों में क्या क्या हुआ इसके ऊपर एक चर्चा भी हो सके और आर्किटेक्चर मेरा डिसिप्लिन है और जॉय सेंसर का भी है तो वास्तु शास्त्र को किस तरह से संस्कृत के साथ लिंक करके आगे ले जाया जा सकता है इसके ऊपर एक चर्चा हो सकती है ऑनलाइन भी हो सकती है या अगर खरगपुर में हो तो बहुत ही अच्छा है मुझे आने का मौका मिलेगा बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद बहुत प्रसन्न हूँ मैं आज बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद अगर पैंडमिक सिचुएशन बेटर होता है तो जनवरी फरवरी में कभी एक दिन का दो दिन का करेंगे और आपको बुलाएंगे हम लोग की इच्छा है कि पैंडमिक स्लोली कम हो जाए तो हमारे आए हमारे आप लोग जैसे महानुभाव आए तो धन्य हो जाएगा आई आई खड़गपुर थोड़ा सफाई हो जाए पवित्र हो जाए जल धरती भवताम आशीर्वाद ही वह अवश्यम सफला भवाम पूर्ण विश्वास वग्रे गम्यम तरी इधानी आई वुड लाइक टू इनवाइट प्रोफेसर जॉयसेन टू से फ्यू क्लोजिंग वर्ड्स एंड देन रिक्वेस्ट प्रोफेसर सोमेश कुमार टू प्लीज डिलीवर द वोट ऑफ थैंक्स एंड देन कुलदीप जी विल मेक अ फ्यू अनाउंसमेंट एंड बी द क्लोज ऑफ द इवेंट थैंक यू by the grace of almighty mother i have been able to make it today am i audible yeah yes yes okay so uh, i i think uh, this one week has been a mahotsav you know it is under the banner of azadi ka amrut mahotsav and i think the amrut the ambrosia has dropped from the rain clouds in 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 sravan and bhadra and all of us has got drenched and how we have got drenched that is the grace of almighty 
I think the words of uh, Ramji, the words of Professor Shubhash Kak, by our esteemed director, you know, his embrace, you know, his embrace of inviting scholars and lovers of Indology from all over the world is an indicator that India is rising again. I'll be very brief. And today, it's such a beautiful thing that I remember that 1929 encounter between Gurudev Ravindranath Tagore and, and Professor Warner Heisenberg. And Heisenberg came running all the way from Germany to meet Tagore. And he said, Gurudev, I read something in your poetry which Ramji was saying today, Professor Ramabala Subramani was saying today, I read something in your poetry which we cannot express by our thousands of equations. But somehow they are talking about that same thing. So Tagore asked, what is that line? Then uh, Eisenberg said it's from Srimad Bhagavad Gita. From the seventh chapter, it says, Sarva Bhuta Satmanam, Sarva Bhutani Chatmani, Ikshate Joga Juktatma, Sarvatra Samadarshana. I mean, it is such a beautiful realization where everything, all diversities in this world, is encapsulated in that one infinity. And that one infinity in the reverse direction has come and entered each and every existence on this universe. So Tagore laughed and asked Heisenberg that how come you have come all the way from Germany to India to find that one line in my poetry? Uh, and Heisenberg, has, Heisenberg said that I am absolutely amazed, sir, by your Gitanjali and their and the lines that you have written, it goes in Bengali. Ami Bangla Yage Bolchi, the line is like this Porosh Jare Jayana Kora, Shabar Majhei Tini Dilendhara. I am saying again, Porosh Jake Jayana Kora, Shabar Majhei Tini Dilendhara. Or that infinite, which is the supreme Brahman and which is beyond the universe, on the other side, that same infinite has entered the heart the heart of hearts of each and every living being and each and every animate and animate inanimate being in this universe this is actually absolutely this is absolutely this is absolutely this is absolutely the mystery of creation you know, this is absolutely the mystery of creation and, yeah okay so i think my uh, my my pranam to all of you and uh, we look forward to your and blessings to this little center which has just come up in IIT Kharagpur with the blessings of Almighty Mother. And as Director Sir said, maybe in another decade, this will become a great place of convergence, assimilation, acceptance, and universal empathy. Pranam, sir. Pranam. Pranam. Thank you very much. Thank I'd like, like to request Professor Anwar Mukhopadhyay to please uh, invite uh, Somesh Kumar for the vote of thanks. Thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Choudhury. Uh, I hereby invite Professor Somesh Kumar, who is uh, a professor of mathematics at IIT Kharagpur and an advisor of the Center for uh, the Center of Excellence for IKS at IIT KGP, to give the vote of thanks. Sir, please. It is my pleasure to propose a vote of thanks for this wonderful program, which is held today in the form of panel discussion, and then we got the views from so many eminent people. Uh, so of course, uh, we had this uh, week-long program, which we called Sanskrit Otsav uh, 2021 under Ajadi Ka Amrat Mahotsav, uh, which is held on the 75th anniversary of Indian independence. Uh, it is organized by Indian Knowledge Systems, uh, the center for excellence that we, are, we have initiated at IIT Kharagpur. It is in collaboration with the Sanskrit Club, Sanskrit Bharti, and also uh, AICT. So we thank each of the organizations and their heads that they have thought about this program and conducted successfully. In fact, in my life, this is the first program which is held exclusively for Sanskrit. I have studied Sanskrit. We had some lectures in Sanskrit, but this kind of program, like every year we conduct uh, a government program, uh, which is called Hindi Sapta or Hindi Pakwada kind of thing, or Hindi Divas our Raj Bhasha Divas, but that is totally a government program. But this program, which is organized, it is such a wonderful scholarly program. In fact, each day we had wonderful uh, sessions with the eminent speakers and they all spoke on 
different aspects like Sanskrit and Ayurveda, Sanskrit and natural sciences and so on. So it was really wonderful. Uh, now it's a formal uh, vote of thanks, let me propose. And I start with the, I mean, like somebody said, Bhishma Pitama. I mean, so definitely uh, Professor Satyavrata Shastri is the doyen of uh, Sanskrit literature and uh, Sanskrit bhasha. Uh, and uh, at the age of 90, he took all the trouble and he sat through the session and he gave his valuable insights that what he uh, found in the Southeast Asia, how the Sanskrit is, I mean, it's there in, in I mean, ingraded inside the uh, psyche of the people. So, I mean, uh, it's really wonderful. And uh, just for his uh, well-being, I mean, like he is 90 and we just pray that he will live at least up to 100 years. And as in uh, Shukla Yajurved, we have the shloka, which we say for ourselves, but we should say for him that Pashyema Sharadaha Shatam Jivema Sharadaha Shatam uh, Srunuyam Sharadaha Shatam, Prabhuvam Sharadaha Shatam, Adina Shyam Sharadaha Shatam, Bhuyesh Sharadaha Shatat. So we pray that he will uh, live at least for 100 years. Uh, I thank Professor Subhash Kak. Uh, he is actually a professor of computer science, but he has extensive interest in the uh, Indian languages, Indian science, uh, the Indian history. Uh, astronomy and uh, and what not archaeo astronomy he actually prepared the section on astro archaeo astronomical sites in india for thematical study on heritage sites in the context of unesco's world heritage convention uh, which is prepared by unesco for international council on monuments and sites and international astronomical union so uh, he has uh, got up so early in the morning and he has sat through the program. I really thank him. And I found some connection with my association with the Kashmir, Jammu and Kashmir, because I started my job from there. And it turns out that he's from Srinagar. Thank you very much, sir, for your kind presence. And definitely, uh, as an advisor to our center, you will be there for us to guide in future also. I thank uh, Sri Chamukran Shastriji uh, when he speaks, you can feel the passion <laughs> that he has for the uh, Sanskrit. He, I mean, the way he spoke, I mean, like he just wants to people that they should use Sanskrit in day to day life. And it should be like a common thing, like what we speak in our mother tongue, like we speak in Hindi, we speak in Bengali or we speak in Tamil. Similarly, there should be a movement. There should be a revolutionary change in the psyche of the people that Sanskrit becomes a common man's language. And the way he speaks, I mean, you can just feel the passion that he is having. I mean, he gave his lecture in Sanskrit and uh, I mean, like we all studied Sanskrit, but now uh, to have that much comfort level of speaking continuously uh, for 10 minutes or 15 minutes, that is remarkable. And that shows his passion. Uh, certainly, sir, we will uh, we will we will have a day when in IIT also we will have this kind of people who will be speaking in Sanskrit. Right now, I think only Anuradha ji is there with us who speaks in Sanskrit and Desai ji. Uh, but I think now in each IIT at least one or two people are there. And I think we should have more as he has suggested. I thank uh, Dr. Anil Kumar ji. He was with us actually. He was uh, our student. So I don't have to really thank him. Actually, he is... Uh, from us, he's uh, a family member, like our younger brother. So, but the uh, the passion that he is having and he is taking the task of uh, spreading Sanskrit uh, from Rurki, I think it is really remarkable. We thank you, uh, Anil Kumar ji. And uh, I think uh, no words are enough to thank uh, His Excellency Sri David Puig ji, who is the ambassador of the Dominican Republic to be present in today's program. So as he said that he is thousands of kilometers away from India and uh, there is does not seem to be any natural thing that binds to the Sanskrit for his country. But I will just say something which I think our Prime Minister also said sometime uh, that we believe in the principle of Vasudhava Kutumbukam. That means the whole uh, whole of the world, they are. It is our family, 
and the second thing is uh, what uh, uh, Ramaji said that Natvaham Tame Rajyam and something he said and then the ultimate thing was that our life should be devoted to the well-being of the people to remove uh, the sufferings of the people and in that line actually again there is another beautiful verse or shloka which I should read it. Uh, sarve bhavantu sukhna, sarve santu niramaya, sarve bhadrani pashyantu, ma kashchit duk bhag bhavet. So that means the welfare of the whole world, all people in the world should be healthy, they should be happy and th nobody should have any kind of sufferings. So with that, I think all the countries of the world are related and more so the Dominican Republic whose ambassador has kindly graced the occasion. I thank you, sir. And I hope we will have a close uh, connection with your country in future for conducting programs, as you have suggested that we can have some refresher course, some teaching programs, and some further collaboration in research also. Uh, I must thank uh, Ramji uh, for excellently moderating the program. And I had uh, actually requested Anuradha that since so many esteemed people are there and we can go on for four hours or five hours or even maybe 10 hours because this program cannot end. The knowledge level of the people and the passion is so much. So I asked her that you please ask Ramji that uh, let him <laughs> at least make some sort of compromise on the time and he has really successfully done it. So maybe we are late by a few minutes, but it's okay. Uh, I really thank him. and. Once again, the contributions to the uh, Indian mathematics and Indian astronomy, he has translated the text and prepared huge treatise. The project that he is undertaking, I think that is uh, worthy of emulation. And then the, there should be a new generation, young generation, <coughs> which should take up from uh, Ramji to take it forward. And uh, we are indebted to him for Im initiating uh, the his Thai program here and then uh, which is actually a forerunner you can say of the Indian knowledge systems here. Uh, I must thank our director Professor VK Tiwari uh, again the passion which he showed to initiate this center and the way he spoke to us that we should have a center and within three years we will convert it to the department. I think it is really remarkable a head of an institution taking up uh, say Kajels on behalf of a certain program or certain language or certain knowledge system. It is really remarkable the way he has uh, uh, taken it forward and encouraged all of us. Uh, in fact, he has already provided us the physical space and I think within we actually got a beautiful gallery uh, made up there. We have taken the students now, three PhD students have been admitted. We have started a uh, elective course where more than 400 students have registered. So I think these are all achievements and it could not have been possible without very, very active involvement of our director. So I thank him for this. I must thank all the speakers, the panelists, and le just let me now name them. That's all. Uh, so Professor Anil Sahasrabuddhe ji, the chairman AICT, Sri Shirshdev Pujari ji, who is the Akhil Bharati, a Mahamantri of Sanskrit Bharati. Uh, we had the vice chancellor of the Kavi Kulguru Kalidas Sanskrit University, Professor Srinivas Varkhede ji. Uh, the, uh, among the lecturers, we had Professor Pavan Goel from the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, uh, Dr. Jairam Mahadevan, uh, Professor uh, P. Ram Manoharji from Amrita Vishwavidya Peetham. Uh, we had, of course, Dr. Vladimir Yatsenko, uh, who is from the Arvindo Integral Life Center, USA. Uh, we had Professor M.D. Srinivas, he gave a beautiful lecture on the Sanskrit and the natural sciences from the Center of Policy Studies. And we had yesterday Professor Gauri Maholikar, who is the Professor and Dean of Faculty at the uh, Chinmay Vishwavidya Peet. And uh, so this is excellent. We had really wonderful lectures and the discussions thereafter in each of them. I thank the chairpersons for the lecture uh, sessions for each of this. Uh, Professor Jayant Mukhopadhyay, who is our Dean Outreach and a Professor of the uh, Department of Computer Science and Engineering. Uh, Professor V. R. Desai, who is the Dean of in Faculty of Engineering and Architecture and a professor in the Civil Engineering. I thank Professor Jyotirmer Chatterjee from the School of uh, Medical Science and Technology, Dr. Anvay Mukhopadhyay, uh, Professor Pratim Kumar Chatraj from the Department of Chemistry, Professor Jinia Mukherjee from the Humanities. 
I thank uh, the entire network team, uh, Mr. S. S. Das and his entire team, and uh, for conducting, for providing the facilities. Uh, I thank Professor Joy Sen for taking up this huge responsibilities of initiating and uh, you can say taking forward the Center for Knowledge Systems, which has actually now uh, shown its uh, national and global presence. Uh, the passion again what he has for the center it is wonderful and i am sure within three to four years it will be really a very big uh, center as our director has envisaged that it will become a global center for attracting the people who work in the indic studies and also connect it to the modern science and technology i will thank uh, dr anuradha Chaudhary, uh, who has taken huge initiative and within a very short time, she could get so many eminent people on the panel for the speakers. I, I think it is really creditable that within such a short time, she could get uh, so many people. And she is, of course, the brain or you can say the uh, mind or the body behind this Indian knowledge systems at IIT Kharagpur. Uh, then definitely I should thank the organizing team, Dr. Anvay Mukhopadhyay, uh, Dr. Mragang Sharad, uh, Dr. Jania Mukherjee and all others, and uh, our very active group of students, volunteers, which includes Koena, who was responsible for preparing so many posters and the publicity material, Kuldeep, who is there all through for looking after the uh, network management. Uh, let us thank, give a big hand to uh, these people, the Mragendra, Ajay, Atul, Ashutosh, Piyush, Riya, Aparna, Akanksha, and Siddhan. Let us give a very big hand to the entire group of this student volunteers, without whose help this program would not have been a success. Finally, let us thank all the participants. Um, as Anuradha told that we had almost 900 uh, registrations, and even today I could see more than 150 participants at some point I saw. So they have attended very passionately and patiently the program. So. Uh, the success of a program depends upon how many people really participate in that. So I thank, finally, I thank one and all everyone to come to the close of this program. Thank you all. Namaskar to all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would just like to request uh, Kuldeep ji to please make the few announcements uh, as a continuation of this event. And then I request Professor Rama Subramanian ji to please, uh, with his Ashivaj Vachanayin, to please uh, do the Shanti Mantra and bring this event to a close. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Anuradha ma'am. So as she rightly said that uh, might be the Sapta is getting over, Sanskrit Sapta, but uh, from our end, it is just the new beginning. And there are a lot of programs that are being planned. Some are just in the preliminary stage, conceptualized stage, but some are uh, already planned for the next upcoming month. So on 19th, that is the third Sunday uh, of uh, next month, September, we are having a uh, competition event so the there will be a quiz uh, there will be a slow quiz citation competition for school students of iit kharagpur so there are total three schools and uh, last year also we did and uh, we, i'm happy to share that la last year in just two days we got around 250 registrations so this year also we are expecting a very good participation from the school students and there will also be a, a sanskrit song singing singing competition for the students of iit kharagpur so all the btech mtech and phd scholars can participate in that competition so this is on, uh, this is on the third sunday of uh, september on 4th and 11th that is the first and second sunday we are having uh, again two lectures by professor nigan sharad and uh, uh, sampananda mishra sir uh, they will be delivering lecture again in the uh, continuing with the series of Sanskrit and they will be de delivering a lecture on 4th and 11th. So uh, with this announcement, uh, again, as I said, this is just the beginning and we would like to have your support and blessings for the upcoming days. Thank you. Dhaniyavada Kuldeep ji uh, and also for your fantastic support for the entire program. And I would like to uh, just mention that we were wanting to do this monthly one lecture at least. So please reserve your last Sunday evening, maybe 6.30 to uh, 7.30, 8, 8 as it invariably happens, uh, for a lecture on Sanskrit and. So we've got Sanskrit and the dramat uh, and uh, Natya Shastra, Sanskrit and various texts we would like to try and present them before you with our learned uh, scholars. 
So with these few words, I'd like to thank everybody profusely from the very bottom of my heart. Bahu And I'd like to invite Professor Rama Subramanian ji to please uh, give us, uh, do the Shanti Mantra for us. Dhaniwad. Om Prithivi Shanti Rantarik Shagun Shanti Dyo Shanti Disha Shanti Ravantar Disha Shanti Rakni Shanti Vayu Shanti Raditya Shanti Chandra Vashanti Nakshatra Nishanti Gaushanti Raja Shanti Rashva Shanti Purusha Shanti Brahma Shanti Brahmana Shanti Shanti Reva Shanti Shanti Rame Astu Shanti Tayahago Shantya Sarva Shantya Mahyan Vipade Chatushpade Shanti Karomi Shanti Rame Astu Shanti Om Om